I think with Hoyas, it's almost like Pokemon cards. You kind of get to the stage where you're like, I must have them all. Not that I'm that into Pokemon, but I feel like I must have all the Hoyas. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. Hoya everyone, see what I did there? And welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And four months ago, I made a video showing you some of my Hoyas. So firstly, I just wanted to take you through and kind of put those clips side by side, show you a then versus now, show you what's changed, give you some growth updates. Some of them have started doing very strange kind of structural things. So I thought I'd give you some updates on those. And then also I wanted to show you some of the Hoyas I've added to my collection since I filmed that video, as well as taking you through some that are currently on my wish list. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So considering a couple of years ago, I really wasn't a fan of Hoyas at all. I think it is safe to say that I have officially caught the bug. I'm a Hoya hater turned Hoya convert turned Hoya addict. And now I literally cannot stop buying them. Is that just me? So I asked you guys why you thought Hoyas had suddenly become so popular. And a lot of you said it was simply down to their blooms. But to me, even without that, they're amazing. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but let me know what you reckon. So the first four month update I wanted to give you was on my Hoya Macrophylla Reds. It's a Hoya Macrophylla Reds, which as you can see, I am currently propagating in sphagnum moss. It's doing okay. Like I, I had a little bit of a little bit of an acclimation issue with this plant. And as you can see, it has changed a huge amount in the last four months. It's almost looking a little bit like a Hoya clandestina now. And I'm actually wondering if maybe I was sold it as a Macrophylla Red when it wasn't. If anybody has any theories, then do let me know because when I Google Macrophylla Red, it looks very, very different to what I've got in my hands. But I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the way it's growing for me. I think when I showed you it in that previous video, I was propagating it from leaf cuttings. And as you can see, they've taken really well. It's it's doing well as a nice full plant. I potted them all up together and it is giving me growth points pretty much all the way around now. The weird thing with it is, is that it kind of, it started growing to this kind of stage about a month and a half, two months ago. And it just kind of seems to have stopped growing. Like that leaf hasn't got any bigger. It hasn't even fully hardened off yet. And I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. It seems happy. It doesn't look unhealthy in any way, but it just, I don't know, it's just suddenly stopped for me. So I'm thinking I might pop it back in my cabinet for a while. That's where I started it off. And oh my goodness, if I could have all of my Hoyas in my cabinet, I absolutely would. It is just perfect conditions for them. They love humidity. They love the warmth. They just tend to do really, really well in a cabinet environment. So nowadays I tend to propagate most of my Hoyas in my cabinet. I propagate them in moss at the moment. I know I have got some questions about that recently. You can use perlite, you can use water, you can use lacquer. But for me personally, I just really love propagating them in moss and I've had a really high success rate doing it that way. So that is the way that I continue to do it. But yeah, this one, I don't really know how I was expecting it to grow, to be honest, but at the moment, it's a lot kind of fuller and bushier than I was expecting. And I kind of get the impression that it might start to tendril at some point and maybe I'll get it on a trellis then. But for now, I just, I think it looks really beautiful. I wish it would speed up a bit and keep growing, but yeah, I'm very happy with how it's doing and I'm excited to see what it does next. I'll keep you updated. Did you know, Hoyas are non-toxic and therefore safe to have in the house with pets and children. That being said, their white sap can be irritating if it comes into contact with the skin, so it's always a good idea to be careful when pruning or propagating. And the next update is my Hoya Wyetii tricolor. This one is this little Hoya Wyetii tricolor, and this is definitely one of my slowest growing Hoyas. I know Hoyas can be quite well known for being quite slow on the whole anyway. It's just so gorgeous, it's got so much character. It, I mean, the thing I really love about Hoyas is just how like succulent and waxy they are and now it is it's doing really well for me i put it on this gorgeous trellis which i do have a discount code for i'll link it down below but i put it on this trellis a while ago and i know it's not particularly a tendrilling hoya from my experience of the plant but it just hasn't really seemed to do a lot. Maybe when I put them side by side, I'll be able to notice a big difference, but it's not one that I've noticed any kind of dramatic growth in as I have with some of my others. I know this is quite often the case for variegated plants. They can grow a lot slower and I have read the standard kind of just green Wyetii does grow faster. I don't actually have that plant, so I can't speak for myself, but I have heard that that's the case. 
But nevertheless, it is fairly slow, but I think it's beautiful. I love the variegation and I love how the new leaves come in so kind of pinky and then fade to that gorgeous kind of limey green, yellowy variegation. I just think it's really unusual and I love the length of its leaves as well. Although it has been very slow growing, it has probably been one of my lowest maintenance plants. I really don't do a lot to this plant at all and it's been in lots of different conditions around my home. It's never complained at all. So I would say if you are looking to get into kind of slightly more unusual Hoyas, then the Wayetio Tricolor is probably a really good shout. It just, I mean, it just looks so unique. It doesn't look like anything else in my collection. And it almost like, if you look at it like that, it doesn't look like a plant. It almost looks like a weird little bunch of flowers or something because you've got all these beautiful colors. But yeah, it's stunning. And I'm, I'm not expecting big things from this plant at the moment just because it doesn't seem to be full of surprises. However, I have got some others that I will show you that have suddenly started doing very strange things. So I would never say never, but currently it's just kind of doing its thing. It seems happy and I'm enjoying watching it very slowly grow. Did you know that Hoyas are epiphytic? This basically means that in their natural habitat, they grow on other trees and plants in the wild and don't actually require much soil to live. Because of this, Hoyas don't need a huge amount of water and are very low maintenance plants. And this next one has really got my heart right now. This is the Hoya SP Bertonet Aff. And this one, I'm pretty sure is a Hoya SP Aff Bertonet. And I, I got this again at the plant swap and it's, it's just really, really gorgeous. I think like, when I first got it because it was labelled weirdly and I got very confused. I thought it might be a Matilda or something like that or maybe a little hybrid because those leaves there look a lot rounder. And as you can probably tell, this one has been a very, very fast grower. I don't know why I didn't expect this type of Hoya to be that quick. There's no kind of logic behind that. I just, when I first got the cuttings of it, I was like, you don't see this type of Hoya every day. Maybe that's because it's a very slow grower and it takes time to propagate. But it's just given me, I mean, not just length in its vines, all of this kind of new bushy growth around the top here. And I just think it's absolutely stunning. The thing I really, really love about this Hoya, and I know that the camera won't pick it up, but all of its leaves are like velvety soft. They're like bunnies ears. It's just, oh, I just think it's beautiful. And I know I've said this in other videos before as well. And I know it sounds like a really silly thing to say, but it's just such a planty plant. Like when somebody draws kind of iconic plants, I feel like this is the kind of thing that they draw. It's just so, so, so perfect. And it's actually getting to the stage now where I'm thinking I can probably bring myself to take some more cuttings, propagate them and get it going as a big full plant because I'm just so in love with that. I would just love it to be a little bit fuller. So I think that is probably what I'm going to do. Again, this is one that started off in my cabinet and I actually only moved it out of my cabinet fairly recently just to clear a bit of space because if you can't tell, my cabinet's getting pretty full, but it's another one that just really, really loved it in there. And I definitely do think that that helped to contribute to the growth that it's given me since the last time you saw it. But yeah, it's a gorgeous Hoya. Again, very, in my experience, very easy to care for and I would highly recommend it. Did you know that Hoyas are very often named after locations, prominent characteristics, respected collectors, and people of exemplary contributions to botany? An example of this is the Hoya I just showed you. Female names will often be adapted to end in an AE, hence Hoya Bertonet, named after Christine Burton. And this next one's definitely one of the weirdest. I actually included it in my weirdest plants video recently, but it's also one that has had a lot of changes over the last few months. It started doing some very strange things. It is my Hoya Undulata Red. This is a Hoya Undulata Red, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, Undulata. But it's really, really gorgeous. You can see under the leaves there, they're red. They're just absolutely beautiful. And at the moment, it's just kind of acclimating in sphagnum moss, and it seems to be doing okay. And I'm just taking it out of its pot so you can kind of see it in the same way as you saw it before. But as you can tell, it's given me some amazing growth in the last four months. It's given me some beautiful new leaves. I mean, I don't know if beautiful is quite the right word for this plant. As I've said again in many of my videos, it's not a Hoya that I would have chosen for myself. It's one that was very kindly sent to me, but it is a Hoya that has got me more into weird Hoyas. I think I saw it at first and I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure if I like it or I hate it. And since I've started to watch it grow, and also since I've noticed that all of those beautiful, splashy, speckly bits in its leaves are actually a really gorgeous purple colour, I don't know, I've just fallen in love with it. But the weird thing with it is, so at first, all of its growth was just kind of quite condensed and going upwards, as you can see with these leaves here. And all of a sudden, it suddenly produced this big tendril with another leaf that's kind of forming. And 
I'm not quite sure what to do about this. I mean, it seems like it would be quite a difficult Hoya to trellis because obviously the majority of its growth is quite bushy and condensed. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do about it yet. I know a lot of people say not to chop back Hoya tendrils and just kind of trellis them and let them, let them do their thing. However, I must confess, I have chopped back Hoya tendrils before. And actually, although yes, you kind of knock the potential of that section of the plant, but the last time I did it, I chopped back a tendril and it actually encouraged lots of the plant at the bottom to kind of start branching out. And I got a lot more foliage and I got much fuller growth. So although yes, that's not exactly what the plant wants, it is trying to look for something to climb up. If you do want to kind of keep it fuller at the base of the plants, then from my experience, that is what I would recommend. As I say, I know Know, some people will say very differently just my personal experience but I am not sure yet what I'm going to do with this I think I'm going to just wait until that leaf kind of reaches full size hardens up and then I will make the decision if anybody has any suggestions what would you do if this was your plant do let me know in the comments I'd be very interested to know I always love having your input because a lot of the time I I'm not quite sure especially when it's a plant like this that I feel like I'm still getting to know like I had this plant for I think I've probably had it for about six or eight months now and in the time that I've had it it has obviously changed so much and it has surprised me so do let me know your thoughts but yeah I'll I'll keep you updated with that I'll keep you updated as always with all of these ones but for now I am just going to continue to let it grow as it is and potentially consider consider introducing a trellis at some point. Did you know that if you do decide to give your Hoyas a trellis, you should always wind the vines round the trellis in an anti-clockwise direction? This is because Hoyas naturally tendril that way and it will mean they're able to grip on and grow much more effectively. Another one that's done pretty well in the last four months is my Hoya Australis Lisa. This is a Hoya Australis Lisa and it's just so, so, so beautiful. And I just love the variegation on the leaves. Like it's so unusual. Like they're just, I don't know, they're almost kind of like peachy. It's not pink, but... It's not quite yellow either. And this is what she's looking like now. Similarly to the last one, I can tell that she is kind of looking for something to climb and I probably do need to get her on a trellis. I think that's gonna be slightly easier with this one because you can kind of tell the growth patterns going in one direction. So I don't think it should be that difficult. It's funny though, every time I've seen a Hoya Australis Lisa sold in shops, I've always seen them sold in hanging baskets, which I mean, I know sometimes suppliers don't know that much about the plants and what they actually like or don't like, and they can just be marketed for decorative purposes, but I haven't really seen this one on a trellis that much, I don't think. Again, let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe all of you guys have yours on trellises. It's not one that I was really expecting to have to trellis, but I do absolutely love the way that it grows and I really want to be able to bring out its full potential. So I think that is definitely on the cards. Again, I know I've had questions before about why you trellis Hoyas and a lot of the time when these tendrils start to appear, they basically are just looking for something to climb and very often foliage won't actually fully develop unless it does have something to climb. So I've got a very good example of this actually with one of my Hoyas that I will show you shortly. But often when you do put them on a trellis, all of a sudden leaves will just kind of burst into action and the plant will be a lot happier. So that's definitely something I'm going to have to do at some point. But again, this is a Hoya that I think has been, from looking at the then versus now, has been actually quicker than I thought. I mean, I think I just don't notice major changes in this plant that much because it's all quite subtle, but it's been relatively fast without, again, without me having to do that much to it. It just lives up on top of my cabinet. It's not in the cabinet. I water it only when the soil feels really quite dry. I missed it quite a lot. In fact, I do miss pretty much all of my Hoyas. Again, I know some people have funny feelings about misting, but they're epiphytic. They get lots of their nutrients from the air and I find that it really, really helps. So yeah, I, I do that for all of them and they all seem on the whole, apart from one, fairly happy. But this is one that I just think is beautiful. I love the pinkiness of the new growth. It's kind of similar to the Wyetii tricolor in its coloring. It's a gorgeous plant. It's very easy to keep. It grows really nicely and yeah, I'm really excited to watch it grow. Did you know the Hoya is an Asian native plant introduced by Scottish botanist Robert Brown and named in honour of the 18th century botanist Thomas Hoy? Oh, and this one's actually started to tendril round my tripod. <laughs> this is my Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. And then the next one is my Hoya Parasitica Black Margin, which as you can see, and you'll see it with quite a few of my Hoyas, is tendrilling quite a lot. And as you can see, she is giving me some new 
new leaves, just like little baby ones there. And I'm hoping she's gonna fill out a little bit. And this is a Hoya that is absolutely, as you can probably tell, crying out for a trellis. It's literally got so many tendrils. And anytime I put it somewhere, like at the moment I've got it over there on my shelves, put it there for a week or so, it will start to wrap itself around them because it's really, really looking for something. And I just haven't yet given it that. So it's on my to-do list, but the only reason that I haven't is because as you can see, it is, it's growing really nicely for me. It has given me some lovely growth in the last four months. It's another one that I am potentially thinking about chopping up, propagating, potentially taking some cuttings to the up, <laughs> to the upcoming plant swap as well, because I know it's a Hoya that people really love. It's one that I also just would really like to share. Like, although I do really love it, I don't feel I don't feel that precious about it in the same way as some of my others. Like, I look at some of them and I'm like, oh, I could never bring myself to chop that. I mean, for the time being. Whereas this one, I, I don't know, I, I really love it, but I'm not as attached to it as I am some of my others. But the thing I love about the Parasitica Black Margin is it's obviously a really robust Hoya. It's got those really kind of thick, waxy leaves. But it's also, if you kind of look closely, the splashiness, or maybe that's not the best leaf to show you, the splashiness on the leaves is almost purple and it's just so unusual. And as well as that, it's got the beautiful black edges, black margins to its leaves. And it's just, I don't know, it's another very planty plant. <laughs> I'm also fairly certain that it's gonna be ready for a repot soon. It has been in this very small pot for quite a long time now. And as you can see, it's supporting a lot of foliage. And yeah, I can also see roots coming out to the bottom. So I think that's when I'll kind of try and be decisive and make the call as to whether or not I chop, chop and propagate, chop and swap or trellis. <laughs> Did you know Hoyas, already known for being quite slow growing, commonly go into dormancy over the winter months to help them stay active and growing over this period, providing them with extra light and heat wherever possible is a really good idea. And I've just realised that I almost forgot about one that's behind me, but this is a four month update on my Hoya Linearis. So this is a Hoya Linearis and I got this one from the plant swap that I went to recently and I don't think she's grown that much in the time that I've had her. It's kind of hard to tell without putting them side by side. But I got this one as just kind of like a really well-rooted cutting and I had never had this type of Hoya before. I think she's gorgeous. And this is what it's looking like now. I think the main thing that I've noticed, maybe I haven't been quite so aware of updates for this plant because I kind of, I see it every day. But the main thing that I've noticed is not so much the length, although it is getting quite long now, it's more the fullness of the plants. Like I think there were only about five or six kind of strands of it when I first got it. And I don't think I was expecting to kind of naturally fill out as much as it has. And as you can tell, although it's not kind of the fullest plants in the world. It's not looking quite so straggly nowadays and of course I could take more cuttings, propagate them and put them back into the same pot if I wanted to and perhaps I will do that at some point, I'm not quite sure, but for now I'm really really happy with how it's growing. It's one that for me it never really feels like a Hoya. I think when I hear Hoya I think waxy, I think kind of dense and thick and this is, I mean it's like the most delicate plant in the world. It is so 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 soft and it's almost more similar to a Ripsalis or like a hanging cactus or something like that. It's just, it's so beautiful. And yeah, I feel like it's one that I kind of overlook a little bit. Again, it's so low maintenance. I really, really don't water it. In fact, it really needs a water right now. I really don't water it that much at all. I don't do a lot to it. I don't kind of have it in any special conditions. I've got my humidifier in here and obviously this room gets good light. But apart from that, it's, it's really chilled. It's a really relaxed plant. So again, I think... To be honest, I think Hoyas in general are probably really great beginner plants because they're so easy to propagate, they're so easy to grow. But this one, I would say, if you're looking, if you're looking for something a little bit unusual, a hanging Hoya, then this is one that I would definitely recommend. I think, I think it's just awesome. Did you know that there are around 900 known species, cultivars and hybrids of Hoya and more are still being discovered? So there's plenty to choose from. And the next one's my crazy huge Hoya. This is my Hoya Sarawak. It just blew my mind. I got it from Arid Market again and this one is my Hoya Sarawak and it is just, it's the most prized plant in my collection right now. I. I can't stop staring at it, it's just absolutely amazing. And sadly, although she's healthy, I personally don't think anything has really changed in the last four months. I think she's doing well, she looks nice and full, she looks nice and green, and she has flowered for me quite a few times over summer. I did actually choose to chop her blooms back the last time she flowered just because I was really hoping it might help to encourage some new growth. 
I don't know where her growth is gonna come from. I feel like she's a very unpredictable plant right now and I don't know if Sarawak, I also don't know if she is actually a Sarawak. Some of you have said Latifolia, again, any theories, please drop them down in the comments and I'd be so interested to know. But assuming she is a Sarawak, I don't know how quickly they actually tend to grow, but my impression that I've had from the time that I've owned her is that they are very slow growing. That being said, to be completely honest, I don't mind too much at the moment. I think as she is, she's gorgeous. I'm not fussed about the fact that she's not popping out new growth every five minutes. I just really appreciate her. I really enjoy looking at her. I feel very, very lucky to have her. She's a very special Hoya. So yeah, when the time comes further down the line, when she does start doing something, I'll let you know. But for the time being, she's just a very beautiful, slow growing, but happy plant. <laughs> Did you know if you place your Hoya in a sunny spot, you'll likely notice its colour start to change and commonly adopt a red tinge. This is known as sun stress. Although in lots of Hoyas, sun stress is beautiful and isn't harmful at all, you always have to watch out for harsh sun as it can cause them to burn. But the last few growth comparisons are currently dotted around this room in hangers, so I will take you off the tripod and take you round to them. But the first one is my Hoya Crimson Queen. Okay, this one here is my Hoya Crimson Queen, which for me, oh, she's caught another one that's tendrilling. This one has been so fast for me. I think in general, I think in general, the main thing for Hoyas in my experience is like for faster growth, light, heat and humidity. So as you can see, I still haven't gotten around to putting her on a trellis. I have just got her in a little hanger at the moment and that is just purely aesthetic. I just really like the look of her in the hanger. But as you can see, she has given me some really incredible growth in the last four months. And she's another Hoya that I think, I don't know, I just don't really notice her growing in the same way as some of my others because it's not quite as dramatic, if that makes sense. Like her growth comes in very small and then it kind of gradually gets bigger. But as you can see just here, she's essentially started to branch out from the same stem and I've now got an extra stem of leaves coming down. And that is because I decided to at one point chop back some of her tenderly bits on the end, which I know they should be on a trellis, but it did help to encourage new growth. So yeah, I'm super, super happy with how she's doing. Did you know Hoya diversifolia possesses many antibacterial properties and was actually used to treat skin conditions and alleviate rheumatism pain? So this is, uh, again, a relatively new addition. This is a Hoya, whoop, Hoya croniana eskimo. And I just, as you know, I love the plants with the bluey silvery leaves. And this one, look at the colour of her. Isn't she just beautiful? beautiful. So in that last video I said that I thought this one was going to be very slow growing and oh my goodness how wrong I was. Like look not just at the length of her but at the fullness. She is honestly I would actually say probably my fastest growing Hoya. She gives me so much beautiful growth. I am just absolutely obsessed with the gorgeous kind of splashy darker and silvery bits on her leaves. Look at the little half moon leaf. It's so pretty. But yeah, she grows beautifully and she has also, in fact, she is still kind of, is she? Uh, they haven't quite popped yet, but she's flowered for me a lot this year. She's one that I think has kind of reached maturity very, very quickly. And as I say, a lot quicker than I was expected, but I think she's beautiful and I am so incredibly proud of her. Did you know that with the proper care, it's not uncommon for a Hoya to live upwards of 30 years, depending on the variety of the plant. Hoyas are semi-succulents, and as long as they are provided proper care, there's no reason why they can't enjoy a very long life indoors. Has this one been slow growing? I don't know. Again, I love it. I love the kind of very little leaves. I mean, they're just, without like sounding ridiculous, they're just really leaf shaped. Like, I know you could say that about any leaf, but for example, that isn't... That isn't a particularly leafy plant if I was to think of it. Whereas this one, I just think they are absolutely stunning. They're just so perfect. Like, look at the shape. They're just, they're like little teardrops. They're so, so, so beautiful. And currently this one is squished in quite tightly next to my fishbone cactus and a very big moss pole. But on the whole, I think it's doing, I think it's doing quite well. As you can see, it has grown a lot for me. She's given me some lovely new growth. I think this one, I don't know why, it's one that again just falls under my radar sometimes. I think because I know if I forget to do stuff to it, it will be okay. For that reason, it's gone so many times being underwatered. 
I probably haven't got the most out of this plant. I feel like if I had taken better care of it, then it probably would have grown even better, similarly to how the Croniana Super Silver has grown for me. But that being said, I still think it's a lovely plant. I still very much appreciate it. I love the little splashy bits on its leaves. Oh, we've got some watermarks there as well. It needs a really good wipe down. It needs some TLC, but I'm really happy with how it's doing and I'll keep you updated with it. Did you know Hoyas are one of the easiest houseplants to look after due to their tolerance, flexibility and conditions. They can cope with lower temperature drops, are extremely drought tolerant and many can adapt to survive in low light conditions. It is my Hoya crinkolate, which is one of my kind of bigger, fuller Hoyas. I've got lots that are quite small and this one is just so, so, so beautiful. I've got it in a little hanger that I made and I just love it. I love the kind of crinkly crinkly bits in its leaves. I know it's in the name Hoya crinkleates, but I love them. They're just so, so, so pretty. And this is the one Hoya that isn't really doing amazingly right now. As you can see, this side of the plant is looking quite kind of yellowy and luminous. And this side is just a little bit shriveled. And again, it's got those watermarks that I really do need to sort out. It's not that I don't love this plant. It's just... It's been a bit of a struggle this summer, to be honest. It had mealybugs quite early on and I completely treated the plant. It is now free from mealybugs, but I think that's just kind of wiped out quite a lot of its energy resources because it was, at the time, absolutely covered. And since then, I, again, have just neglected it ever so slightly. I know that once I do give it a good water and kind of give it a bit of TLC, it will be absolutely fine, but I'm not quite sure for that reason how much this one's changed in the last four months. I kind of feel like if anything, it probably looks a little bit worse, but I still love it and I am confident that I will be able to get it back to health at some point soon. Although plant prices do fluctuate, many rare Hoyas are still extremely expensive to purchase. One article states that in 2017, someone purchased a two-leaf cutting of variegated Hoya carnosa compacta for over £6,000. The price of this cutting was due to the fact that the plant grows and propagates slowly, meaning there were very few available at the time. So this one is definitely the tenderliest one of them all. <laughs> if you look at them, like they're absolutely crazy. This is a Hoya pubicalix, but it's just gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. I love how the new growth with it is all kind of like purpley as well. Like it's really dark and it just looks so, so, so pretty. And this plant now is not in its best position. It's just kind of, this is a temporary measure. I've just kind of strapped it up to kind of keep it out of the way because it didn't have another hanger. And I did trellis it. I trellised it since I made that video and oh my goodness, it got so much new growth going. Like all of this down here, none of that was there before, but it did outgrow the trellis very, very quickly. So I took the trellis out with the plan of making another one and that was weeks ago now and I still haven't got around to it. But the plant is, it's growing well, it's growing healthily. I'm really happy with how it's doing. I know it does want to climb, like over here, you can see, oh, that's the dog. You can see it's tendrilling majorly, but for now, this is where it is. And when I get a moment, I will be getting it onto a new trellis. And the last fun Hoya fact for this video before we move on, the leaves of each type of Hoya are usually an indicator as to what it needs. Small leaves tend to mean that they typically grow in high light, whereas large leaves provide a bigger surface area needed to absorb light in shady spots. The same goes for texture. Thick, succulent leaves usually store more water and won't need as much, whereas thinner leafed Hoyas tend to be more thirsty. And then some other Hoyas that I've added to my collection more recently since that video. The first one I have shown you before, but I love it. I think it's amazing, is the Hoya Tangamoose. And again, I said that I was getting really, really into weird Hoyas. This is pretty much up there with the Undulata Red. It's just so bizarre, but it's so beefy. And I'm so excited to watch it grow. This is obviously currently its only leaf. It is completely rooted, but as of yet, no growth. It's a cabinet Hoya and it seems happy in the cabinet. So fingers crossed, it gives me some growth at some point soon, but I just love the veination on it. And I also love the kind of very subtle splashiness of it. I think it's just so unusual. And it's one that really excites me at the moment. It's one that I'm kind of constantly checking on, seeing if there's any updates. And I'm super intrigued to see what it's gonna look like when it does start growing for me. I've Googled some pictures of it and it looks amazing. So if mine can kind of give me some beautiful big growth, I will be absolutely over the moon because yeah, it's, it's another kind of state Hoyer. It's up there with the Sarawak, I'd say. But then the next 
three that I've got here. If you're on my Patreon, then you will have already seen these ones and one doesn't technically count as a Hoya, but I'm gonna include it anyway. So the one that doesn't technically count, and I might need to put clips of these in, this is a Deshidia watermelon and it's pretty much like a Hoya. I know their blooms are different, but I also know the genus has been swapped many times and I just kind of think of it as a Hoya. It grows very similarly. As I say, I will put some clips in because I'm aware that this probably isn't clear. It is just propagating at the moment. I only got these cuttings fairly recently and I think it's beautiful. I've seen it again as a full plant and I just think that white veination is absolutely stunning. I think it's such a delicate, delicate plant. I was going to call it a Hoya. I know it's not, but it is one that I'm really, really excited to have in my collection. And then the next one, again, not a particularly rare Hoya, but it's one that I've wanted for ages. It's just a little Hoya polyneura. Again, I only started propagating this one less than a week ago, so it's currently unrooted. Yeah, it would be very ambitious for me to think that this one might have rooted already. It definitely hasn't. And I'm really happy to now own. Again, I'll put in some clips of it so that you can kind of see it in more detail. But then this one was just kind of an impulse buy. I got it when I got those other two. And it's just a Hoya that I don't think I'd seen before. Or if I had, I kind of hadn't taken much notice of. It's a Hoya pubera. And it's weird, actually, like it's growth is so succulent like it's almost like a crassula i'd almost believe that this was i don't know just like a really like juicy succulent i don't know how well you can actually tell but i think it's leaves i love the small leaf toys i think they're just so delicate and diddy and i also just really love the shade of green like it's such a bright vibrant green compared to a lot of my other plants and so i'm excited to see what it does for me as i say maybe not the most exciting one for some people but i just kind of like mixing it up and i think with hoyas it's almost it's like Pokemon cards you kind of get to the stage where you're like I must have them all not that I'm that into Pokemon but I feel like I must have all the Hoyas so yeah that's where I'm at at the moment and then oh do we do the exciting one let's save that one for a moment so again if you're on my Patreon you will have seen this one recently but another Hoya that I've wanted for a very long time have never added to my collection but now have is the Hoya Bella and this Hoya Bella just blew my mind when I unboxed it because I did not think it was going to be anywhere near this big like look at the length of those vines it's just absolutely stunning and again very similarly to what I just said about the pubera but it's just such a gorgeous vibrant green like I don't know if you just look at the plants in the background and then you look at this one this one's just like bam it almost doesn't look like a real plant but I think it's gorgeous I love the texture of it I love the shape of its little leaves and just because of the size of it I was already considering taking some cuttings but I have just noticed that one of its vines is broken there so I think after this video I will snip that off get the cutting in moss or make a few cuttings and get them rooting because again for the size of the plant it's in a very 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 small pot and I know that I will need to repot it fairly soon and when I do I would quite like to get a fuller plant going so yeah that is the Hoya Bella and then the very exciting one well I've got a few very exciting ones but on the note of the Hoya Bella, one of my friends very, very kindly sent me a variegated Hoya Bella for my birthday. And I just think that is the most beautiful, beautiful plant. It's just stunning. Again, what I was just saying about the shape of the leaves, it's got that, but it's also just got those gorgeous limey yellow leaves that are just so, so, so different to anything I own. It's just so delicate. It's also, <laughs> I got the name very wrong the last time I tried to describe this, but it's also known as a... I said Louis Boys and I have people coming at me in the comments. So L Louis Boy, maybe? I don't know. Someone write it phonetically down below and I will try and remember. But yes, I'm for now just going to call it a variegated Hoya Bella, but it's one that I've wanted for ages. I feel so fortunate to now own and I'm super excited to see how it grows. I have heard that it is quite a slow growing Hoya, but again, I was told that about the Croniana and that definitely proved that theory wrong. So it's in my cabinet. Again, happy place for Hoyas. It's in there at the moment. I really hope it continues to do good things for me. And hopefully, I mean, oh my goodness, if one day it got to the stage of the non-variegated Hoya Bella, my mind would just be blown. I'd be absolutely over the moon. But then another one that I've had for a while is just a little cutting. It's very much rooted. I haven't potted it up. I don't think I've ever spoken about it on my channel. Not because I dislike it, just because... I don't know, it's just not 
exciting me that much at the moment, I guess. It's just a little Hoya Rosita cutting and I like the Hoya Rosita. I've seen it as a big full plant and I think it's gorgeous. And yes, I would absolutely buy the full plant. And with a lot of my other Hoyas, I love getting them as little babies. I love propagating them. I love growing them from nothing into, into big plants of my own. With this one, I just don't know if I really have the patience to wait. And that doesn't happen to me very often with plants. So I think this might be one that comes to the plant swap. I'm not sure. Or should I just stick with it? I think sometimes I just find that I don't have the motivation to wait for a plant. And this one has given me pretty much no growth in the time that I've had it. And I think I think I probably actually had it for longer than four months and I just forgot to include it in my last Hoya video. But yeah, it hasn't really done much. It's got a little bit of new growth coming towards the end there. But it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of there and it seems happy, but it's very, very slow. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. But then lastly, I thought there were more actually, unless I'm missing any, then this is the last one for now. But this is a Hoya Cordata, Caudata. Again, not quite sure how that's meant to be pronounced, but it's another very weird Hoya. And I got this from my friend Emma, who's good growing on YouTube. And she just wasn't loving it, but she was like, I know you love weird Hoyas. I feel like this is gonna be one that you really like. And it is, I've only had it a few weeks, but it's another one that's been in my cabinet. And it's funny, actually, Emma was saying that in the time that she had it, it didn't really do anything for her. And since I've had it, it's, I mean, majorly, majorly started tendrilling, but as you can see, it has got some new growth coming on there as well. And honestly, I put that down to the cabinet because as I say, it just does such wonderful things for Hoyas. Heat, light, humidity, all the things they really like. It's starting to push out some new growth. So yeah, it's very early days with this one, but I, I think it's lovely. I think it's, weird and I really like weird so very excited to see what it does but yeah so those are currently all of the Hoyas in my collection I am in conversation with someone about potentially adding a couple more to my collection that I've had my eye on for a while but I am gonna just quickly make a cup of tea and then I will take you through some of my wish list Hoyas because the list could go on and on but I've got some on there that I am really seriously ogling over and I'm very excited to show you. So I thought I would bring my laptop over to the sofa to show you some of these because oh my goodness they're absolutely amazing. I have also just ever so slightly refined my wish list because I could go through weird and wonderful Hoyas literally all day. I've got a massive 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 list on my phone of all of my wish list Hoyas so if you would like a video on that, if you want to hear me talk about all of the weird Hoyas on my wish list, let me know in the comments. I would happily make that video. Again, I was gonna say the pictures that I'm looking at here, if you want to see the exact pictures, just Google the names of these plants. I'll put all of the names on the screen, but I'm just gonna be using pictures from Instagram because I don't wanna get copyrighted or anything like that. And all of the Instagram accounts that I use will be there if you want to go and check them out. But the first one, this is in no particular order, but the first one is the Hoya Wilbur Graves. It's one that's been on my wish list for absolutely ages. You guys know how much I love silvery blue plants anyway, but this one, I mean, it's got that, but then it's also got the kind of reverse splashiness, kind of like darker patches of variegation. And I just think it's absolutely stunning. I was gonna say a lot of the Hoyas that I'm gonna, a lot, five or six that I'm gonna take you through on my wish list. These are kind of like ultimate wish list ones. They are not cheap to buy. Even cuttings are very expensive and I know that they're potentially not very attainable, but this is my this is my dream list of plants. So yes, Hoya Wilbur Graves, Hoya Michelle as well. Again, oh my goodness, potentially the splashiest Hoya ever. I don't know if this picture is Hoya Michelle or Hoya Michelle splash, but just look at those leaves. Aren't they just beautiful? It's like somebody just kind of flicks a paintbrush at them. They're just so, so, so perfect. They can also grow to be absolutely huge. Like again, Google it. Some of the pictures of this plant are just out of this world. And it's one that I would feel so, so, so lucky to own. So that's very high on the wish list. And then Hoya Meredithii, this one, this one I kind of was only made aware about quite recently. I was looking for a Callistophylla cutting because I absolutely love the Callistophylla and it's one that I don't currently have in my collection. And that is when I stumbled across the Meredithii and it's very similar, like the veination is very similar in the fact that it's so dark and dramatic and the color of the leaves, the kind of almost luminous green, I think is beautiful but I don't know what it was about almost kind of like the ruffled edge of this leaf. It just really grabbed me and it went straight onto my wish list. So yeah, but as I say, Callistophylla is also still on there. 
And then another one that is, again, so ridiculously expensive, but I had to include it, is the Hoya Nova Ghost. And it just honestly melts my heart. It doesn't look real. It's got those beautiful kind of grey, blue, silvery, amazing leaves that just... I don't know why I just love plants like that so much. Like all of my bluey plants just bring me so much joy and I just find them very kind of soothing on the eye. And this one's just one that I don't have anything like. I feel like I would truly appreciate and would feel very lucky to have in my collection. So who knows, maybe one day. Oh, do I do a few more or do I do one more? I'll do one more for now. And if you do want a specific wish list Hoya video, then let me know and I'll, I'll happily go through the whole list. But the last one is another silvery one. It's Hoya Compacta Jodi Silver, and it's pretty similar to the green version of this plant, but it is almost like, it's just completely, it's completely silvery and blue, and I think it's stunning. And again, it's just one that is kind of like weird and alien. And I love the structure of the Hoya Compacta and to think of that in silver, just, I don't know. It just, it makes me, it makes me need that plant. So that's on the list and I'm gonna do one more. I'm just gonna do one more because it's a weird Hoya and I feel like it deserves to be in this video. I'm not sure how you pronounce its name. It's Hoya Gun, Gunung, I'm gonna get this so wrong. Hoya Gunung Gading or Hoya Gunungading. <laughs> That's probably the better way of saying it. Hoya Ganungading. But to me, this one just looks like a cartoon Hoya. It really doesn't look real. I'm also on the whole not a massive fan of colourful houseplants. I love them in other people's homes, but I don't know. I just, I get a bit like, I don't want to throw around the term OCD, but like colour does weird things to my brain when it's in certain spaces. I don't know. I really can't explain it. But this is one that I will absolutely make the exception for. I think it's just so, so, so beautiful. Again, that veination, that dark veination is just stunning. But the fact that the new growth comes in that beautiful, beautiful kind of vibrant red colour and then fades to the green, I don't know. It just, it blows my mind and I absolutely love it. But yes, right, those are all of the ones I'm going to show you in this video. As I say, I'll happily share more if you'd like to see them. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.